little old David. fashioned thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's such a nice, beautiful English lady. Yeah. The new ones. Not oh, no. So I see Mrs. Yeah, Ballantyne laid on. Yeah. And this, I word, is your grandfather and your and great grandfather in uniform. Yeah. Tell me where can I go? There's no place I can see. Where to go, where to go Every door is closed for me To the left, to the right It's the same in every love There is no place to go And it's me who should know Who would you please understand I don't know whether it's because I've declined into sentimentality or because my aunties at last feel safe, but the conversation we're having about our origins we didn't used to have. All I once knew about us was that my great-grandparents had come over with their possessions tied up in sheets, in flight from the usual, some libel or pogrom, some expression of peasant irrationality, brewed up in some Eastern European shtetl. Why be more specific? We were looking forward, not back. But now, because I'm feeling sentimental and they're feeling safe, we have tracked ourselves down to a couple of Lithuanian villages, Lazdie, in Syria, where we worked in glass, baked bagels, played in a klezmer band, and kept a goat. <laughs> I'm taking the long route to Lithuania, across the Bavarian Alps. How can you miss out Germany if you're making a Jewish journey of the heart? And since I'm here, do I not have a guest's obligation to behave as my hosts do? Put on a chamois leather bib and romper suit and let the mountain air enlarge my mind as it has for centuries enlarged theirs. There is an exhibition on in Berlin of Jewish life. Two and a half thousand objects, many of them modest and domestic, spread over 20 rooms of the Martin Gropius building. A saturation exhibition, as though to say, well, look what's still here. And Berliners are coming to look, individually and in groups and in parties from outside Berlin. Germans are coming to look and be lectured on in such matters as Jewish family life, the role of the Jewish mother, the Sabbath. I watch with demonic satisfaction as they attend, muse, nod, and otherwise show their interest. And I rejoice in the punishment which has been meted out to them, an eternity of having to express polite curiosity about the minutiae of Judaism, the Kiddush cup, the candelabra, the spice boxes, the way we live. Ich kann mich sehr genau daran erinnern, als, als ich in eurem Alter war, in den 15 Jahren, wie uns der Holocaust und alles, was mit den Juden passiert ist. Martin Buber once wrote that there were Germans who no longer had a face for him because of what they'd done. I'm not of that generation. Bernard Heislop and his high school pupils all have faces that are distinct to me and touching. If I am troubled, it is their youth, not their nationality, that troubles me. I'd, I'd like to ask you a difficult question in simple English. Do you feel, does your generation feel, any guilt by association for what happened here 50, 60 years ago? If you, um, but if you, are said uh, to be guilty, um, you can't uh, make things be normal again yeah. between them and us. 
When you say them and us, you mean you mean Germans and the Jews. Yes. But I suppose Jews would say, well, it's very difficult for us to feel normal to you yes, if you do not have some s extremely strong response to what happened. I think many a Jew would feel he doesn't want you to be guilty, and he actually doesn't want you to be ashamed. Not because necessarily that, that stops you being objective, but because guilt and shame are too small. That doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't uh, interest me or something like that, but it's a fact that uh, it wasn't me. If someone says to me, well, the Jews were partly responsible for what happened to them for such and such, a, there's, there's two things I might say. I might say that is not historically true, but I also might go away and think, what is it about my people? What is it about the culture to which I belong yeah, this, that yeah. made it behave in this way? So it is about me, although it happened a hundred years ago. Maybe it is about me because it runs, it runs through. Okay, me. but maybe this is the special problem because uh, I myself uh, don't uh, feel, feel any, any of, of, of my, my, my culture anyways. We are not proud to be German, so why should we... I just don't care if yeah. I'm German or if I'm uh, anything. I, I think I, I can integrate in, in any people uh, I like. In, I don't know, Africa or any other Did country. Did you say you can integrate with anybody? Yeah. With anybody? And I think, yeah. Integrate with anybody? Well, there's an irony. That used to be the Jews' special gift, and some would say weakness, to fit in, to find a niche for himself anywhere. Have we now taught it to the Germans how to rub along quietly? Nice if we have. Let them suffer the abasement. Everything is banal in a place like this, including the observation that everything is banal. There are no mysteries here, unless we would be amazed, given our brutishness, that there have not been more places like it. Brute boredom, presumably, is all that stops us. For Jews, overcoming this sensation of banality has been our prime collective preoccupation for the last half century. Never again, we go on saying, as if that feeble incantation might, through mere repetition, change what cannot change. We have come up with a word, Holocaust, which is bigger than its actual meaning, and we have built a fence around it and anointed it and consecrated it. Our Holocaust, not your Holocaust. We have a right to that. But we are more than the sum of our miseries. We are not sacred by virtue of our victimization. I don't know what else we might have done, but we have rolled an obstruction between ourselves and the most complete operation of our intelligences. Holocaust. We can't see past it. We can't think past it. We can't feel past it. As boys, as Jewish boys, we made concentration camp jokes, jokes as black as death, but jokes for all that. Now, 30 years on, no joking is permitted and the most proven immemorial method of facing down horrors is denied us. All that counts is the event, Holocaust. And we are to make less of ourselves in order to make more of it. A further martyrdom to our own history.
I am not above the thing I decry, my Holocaust, not your Holocaust. Although I know that priests died in this place, as well as Jews and gypsies, I am offended by the presence of crosses. There is a church here and a convent with a Christian gift shop. I am not above the thing I decry, and I think churches would do better to leave this place alone. Christianity did not create Nazism, but in some instances it condoned it, and its own history of anti-Semitism set precedents that eased the way of Nazism into Christian hearts. Half a cross is still half a cross too many here. Isn't one of the lessons of the Holocaust that there can be no safety for Jews as long as there remains as a world religion, a faith predicated on Jewish evil? I am not authorized to make this bargain, but I will make it anyway. You close your churches and we'll drop the word Holocaust. Funny the relief you always feel on leaving Germany if you're Jewish. No matter how jolly a time you've had, no matter how little you're looking forward to where you're going next, in my case, Poland, it's always good to slam the door behind you. I understand why some Jews have returned to Germany. We loved the Germans. We associated ourselves with their culture, became part of it. They didn't love us, it's true, but that only tightens the bonds. Nothing is harder to turn your back on than unrequited love. Shouldn't we try, though, not just for our own sakes, but for the sake of Germans too, new Germans, Germans with distinct faces, shouldn't we Jews simply skip the place for a century or two so that in our absence they can recover some of that national pride without which no people can be contented or trusted? I dread Poland, the East, for other reasons. I dread it retrospectively for the kind of Jews we became there. Earlier this century, Warsaw had a bigger Jewish population than any other city in the world except New York. Now it's largely Jew-free, bright, touristy, renovated, post-communist. Nice for it. Viewed in the long term, nice for us too. I'm glad we're out of here. The climate didn't suit us. Fear of pogroms didn't suit us. Being excluded from the passing parade of life didn't suit us. The Polish Jews were barbarous, wrote the Jewish historian Heinrich Graetz. They had an aversion to civilization. It's easy to see how it happened. We were thrown back on the Talmud, the one thing that was indubitably ours, and we studied it and studied it in isolation from every other activity. Hasidism, emotional Judaism, sprang up here as a rebellion against such unworldly bookishness. Its roots in the same folk beliefs and rusticity which Jew-free Poland goes on celebrating. The idealization of the peasant. Another reason I'm glad we've gone from here. Were it not tactless to speak of censorship in a country so recently de-Sovietized, I'd suggest that the Poles ban this. There's nothing to be said for peasant life, even when it's cleaned up for tourists. Nothing to be said for it morally, intellectually, politically, or musically. We're all dangerous. We all kill what we don't understand. The problem with peasants is that they don't understand anything. You could argue that the glorification of rude, rustic health should also be banned from this country for a while, out of respect for those to whom Poland signifies the very opposite. Come to Poland as a Jewish pilgrim, and this is how you spend your time, watching tombs bloom.
don't think it hasn't occurred to me that there's something perverse about this. I'm not much of a synagogue goer in my own country. So what am I doing, sighing over the ruins of places I don't much care about whole? Am I just a sentimental tourist after all then? Or is there something hallowed about destruction? And am I more a Jew in death than I am in life? Woj, Polish for was. What fiend found me a car with such a number plate? Enough of was. As for is, I'm on the road to Tychochin in northeast Poland for Corpus Christi. And I have to say that without the choreography and through the windows of a speeding car, the life of agrarian simplicity wears a benign countenance. In the main, and for most of the time we were here, Jews were not allowed access to the land. So I don't know in my blood what any of these animals are for, what they pull, what they yield, any more than I know in my blood what is going to happen at a festival in honor to the body of Christ. Have I explained? Have I explained enough? Can I ever explain how this symbolism affects a Jew? I am not reminded every time I see the cross of my culpability in that crime without which there would be no Christianity. But I cannot attend any Christian ritual and not realize my importance to it, my indispensable role in its meaning. A Christian drama without a Jew, without a Jew remembered, is like Hamlet without the prince. All right. Hamlet without the ghost. And yet this Christian community, which is no more to be blamed than thousands like it, has one way or another rid itself of its necessary Jewish component. Tychochin was once half Jewish. Now, not a single Jewish soul resides here. So they have murdered their own play reduced it from an argument to a monologue. And I am returned to make it whole for them again. Thou shalt not make, said the Jewish God, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth below. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Official Jewish art has been austere, some would even say abstemious, ever since. The guidebooks call Tychochin Synagogue Baroque, but there is not much of the theatricality we associate with the Baroque in this temple. Few synagogues writhe or soar architecturally, and the absence of ornament or icon is a disappointment if you like religion to be a puppet show. For good and bad, Judaism is a religion of the word. What you don't speak, you don't feel. Scholasticism has partly been forced on us, but it was there in some form from the start, in the idea of the book and of God as its writer. Respect for words is respect for God's wishes. Even to a non-observant, unbelieving Jew like me, there is comfort an archaic solace in feeling the ancient script winding and unwinding its meanings around you.
It may be the persistence of the word that explains the persistence of Judaism. Warsaw is not, after all, Jew-free. A group of students, some of them alive only recently to the fact that they are Jewish, have begun to edit a Jewish newspaper, Yidele, the little Jew, little but living. The problem is that here in Poland, when people come here and people who live here, they, um, it's very common and very usual that Jews talk about the past, the war. So when people come here and tell me, how can you live here? It's blood. It's, you're walking in blood. You, you sleep on blood. a cemetery. You wake up and you should cry every morning because of what happened here. No, I'm not crying here every morning. What I see on the, on the, on the ground is water, not blood. And this is not cemetery. People get born here. It's a normal country. And, you know, why should I move out because of the past? The past is gone. And I don't... That's, Already? The past, yeah. We're not talking about a thousand years ago. We're talking about a past but, that some people remember, that some people lived through. But I don't. That's, that's something else. When I make decisions about my life, I, I'm, I make them because of, the, of things that happen. I mean, I, I don't eat dinner because I'm fat now, and not because I was fat. But uh, no decision is made in isolation. You don't live in a world on your own. You live in a world with other people. And in this country, you're living in a world with people who did see rivers of blood. Well, they saw it. I mean, if I saw that everybody hates me because I'm a Jew, then I would have to move out because I don't want to live with people that hate me. I don't hate and I don't want to be hated. But, you know, I choose my friends and my friends are the ones that are not anti-Semitic. And that's it. That's why, I, you know, I'm happy. I'm nice here. for you if you can choose friends that are anti-Semitic, but it has not always been the case. But, you know, the problem is, and it's very important to remember, that it wasn't Polish people who was making Holocaust. It was German, so what's the problem? Uh, I'm living in country, in my country, and why I should move on? Even history, even history, even history, Jews, Jews from other countries, they say, they, they expect of me to move from this country. English and Jews and American Jews say yes, you should American. Move. English Jews, American, especially American Jews, especially and, American and Israel Jews, and I hate it. Well, I'm not an English or American Jew saying that I think you ought to get out of here because this is polluted land or whatever. But it does seem to me that the, the, the a problem you face is what kind of Jewish life are you going to be able to make here? What kind of Jewish life can you make here? What kind of Jewish life will they let you make here? I don't understand what it means, kind of Jewish life. Yeah. For but me, you don't understand I, I have what that it problem of kind of Jewish life. It's my life, not Jewish life. And there are certain things that Jews are supposed to do, so I choose if I want to do them or not. And that's only my choice and not my surroundings. My surroundings don't choose for me, I do. I get that. But maybe the problem that I'm having with what you're saying is this. You seem to be describing the kind of choice that I have and the kind of the way I have lived my life in England. I have been that kind of a Jew. I've done what I wanted to do. And if anybody says anything else, I say, mind your own business. I pick and I choose as I want to. But it's strangely, it seems to me you've got another kind of responsibility. You've actually got it more difficult. You've got to do something I haven't got to do. In a way, if you're going to stay here, you've got to rebuild. Uh, that's why why we make newspaper. That's why why we meet on Shabbos. Okay, we know about the past, but the most important thing is the future, not the past. And we we couldn't think only about past. I hereby retract everything I have so far said about the Holocaust. You can be too free of it. You can be too forgetful. With help from the Lauder Foundation. Rabbi Michael Shudrick is here on a revitalizing mission, but it's not easy revitalizing what wants to stay moribund. The, the older Jews here in Poland, many of them are very excited by the fact that there are young Jews. Some of them feel a little ambivalent because for a number of decades they've had the status of being the last Jews of Poland of a thousand years. To which a degree of dignity attaches. Yes. Which they don't want to lose. Is it? Yes. Vilnius, much disputed capital of Lithuania. Home. Home to half of me anyway. My mother's half. The half that counts Jewishly. Her grandparents left in good time a hundred years ago. And I surely am the first to have come back. Hi. 
Have you the same as Howard Jacobson? Yeah. I'm, I'm David. I'm David. You're Simon. Simon. Yeah. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah. This is our car. Yeah. Yeah. Just get a car. How are the flights? Good. It's fine. Okay, okay. what do you want? A real to flight. Seat? Here, here's Whatever. fine. It's possible I'm being kidnapped. My, My guides, David and Simon Rosas, are not family. They just feel like family. And family life is a sort of kidnapping. People claiming to be your relatives find you when you're very small and bundle you off to a place they call home. I say home, but in truth, I'm not there yet. We were rural, shtetl Lithuanians, not fast, capital city Lithuanians. It's a question whether Vilnius is home to anybody. In 1915, the Germans pushed out the Russians. In 1919, the Poles pushed out the Germans. Then the Bolsheviks pushed out the Poles. The Poles, the Bolsheviks, the Bolsheviks, the Poles. Until the Lithuanians, remembering whose capital city this was supposed to be, pushed out everybody. And this just takes us to 1922. So I don't know the nationality of any of these faces. The only thing I feel confident of saying is that they're not Jewish. This was a trip without David. What do you mean without David? David wasn't with you on this. No, no. I wasn't on his pocket. No, I, I didn't expect Jewish faces. I have assumed I there will be no family likenesses left here. So an evening with the Rosas family is an unlooked for pleasure, albeit a passing one, because for the remaining Lithuanian Jews, the future is elsewhere. How come you're not all in Israel anyway? We just missed. Yeah, we well, just missed the right time, I think. Can I take another chicken while we're talking about this? Yeah, right. sure. We can take two while we're talking about. No, what what happened was that we just uh, we were planning, we were thinking things like that, and then we we were just afraid to make that move. Oh, is it impossible now? Yeah? No, it's no. still possible. It's possible all the time, but we have to think what we lose and what we get. Are you still thinking of it? Yes, I'm still thinking of it. So how would you feel? Close. I've got to peer at you through the carnations. How would you feel if they if they go away? She says that uh -huh. well, actually she would like would go to study somewhere abroad, but mm -hmm. she's like afraid of. I mean, but afraid because they may not come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no yeah, not because. But I brought me a dash near Galicia, but not because she couldn't be near nearby. So do you ever say to yourself, well, the 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 Jewish population of Vilnius may may grow, and the community may come to thrive again. There are signs of things happening. Or... Do you believe no, it? I don't think so. Well, the signs uh, too, too are that left. Jews are still living. Well, let's say in are they, are they still living? In smaller numbers, let's say one family a week, I don't know how many. All young people left, all old people stay. And certainly then you don't have any future here. See some pictures. Uh, old, old family pictures. Mm. Those are very old things. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, that's the most people. I like that. Who's who's this? That's my uh -huh. my Davidinka. Uh, who's, yeah. who's, who's this? David Oyev. Yeah, yeah. Pavlovs uh, friend of his. Pavlovs cover. Da, kai patrodo, mus tu vei dai chato kievat, kai 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 kai. Do do these photos look like like your family photos? I mean the style and and. Uh, yeah, yes, actually sure they do. Like they do. I even see faces that remind me. I keep thinking, that looks like uh, that looks like an uncle or that looks like an auntie. Do you think I look like? Do you think I look like your lot? Like what? By the way, when you look at my face, do you, yeah. would you be able to say he's probably a Lithuanian Jew? All right. I want to be called a Litvak. I like the idea that someone would go, he's a Litvak, yeah. because all those Jews, all those Jews in England, certainly all those Jews in Manchester, none of them know. They just go, oh, we're from Russia or we're from Poland. I think it's quite well, nice to be able to say. Yeah, this one looks like. Is that that you look like? This is the one I look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my mom said. You think I look like? <laughs> he was a friend. Now he's in state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was even a friend, like close, close friend. Yeah. yeah. You liked him? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Gražu stip gerai atrodant į suprasmę. Jo, jo, įdomus. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 What an interesting face, yes. Mm-hmm. Ah, like, oh, yeah. But he doesn't seem able to grow a really manly beard. Mm-hmm. It's not Perhaps bushy it's like mine. My evening with the Rosas family has reminded me how clever the Lithuanian Jew was reputed to be and how contentious. Mitnagedim, we were called, opponents. Opponents especially of Hasidism. It was Elijah ben Solomon, called the Gaon, or genius, who led us in this battle against irrational Judaism. Nobody seems to know which house was his, but I choose one which is shuttered and think of him sitting behind drawn blinds, reading by candlelight, with his feet in a bowl of cold water to keep him awake, fulminating against the ecstasies of the Hasids, whose defense of their incoherence was that they roamed remote spheres in their thoughts. There is another call on my loyalty here in the old ghetto, Sticklier Street, otherwise Glazier Street. My Lithuanian great-great-grandfather was a glazier. Odd, I had thought, when I'd first heard about it. A Jewish glazier? But apparently not odd at all. It was something we were good at, putting in windows and never looking out of them. On a map on the wall of Vilnius's Jewish Museum, I find Lazdie, where my great-grandfather was born, and Serie, where he courted my great-grandmother, the glazier's daughter. Jewish memory was not permitted under communism. There had been no Jewish tragedy. There was no Holocaust. This small, touching, scissors and paste museum is the first such memorial to the murdered Jews of Lithuania in 50 years. Rakili Kostanian, tends it like a flame. You know, there are many people who are coming here, Jewish people, let's say from America or from Israel, who say, uh, who needs your museum? Who needs it? There will be no Jews at all here in some years. And who needs your museum? You run away. Don't stay here, you run away. Why are you here? Why don't you leave? Uh, question. Every one of us uh, is not a young man here and everyone has its own problems why we didn't leave in time. Everything should have been done in time. Our train has left. Our train has left and we feel not only this but we feel our duty and it's not only duty, it's um, a wish, a requirement of our own, of our souls, to build up a memorial in name of those who perished here. And uh, if everyone leaves, tell me, you tell me, if everyone leaves and there will be no sign of such a Jewish life that flourished here for centuries, for seven centuries, and there will be Judenfrei and no sign of Jewish culture. Wouldn't it be the same what Hitler wanted to be? Well, this is always the question. But maybe we have to say that Hitler actually did get what he wanted, that he won that particular one. We cannot go on fighting Hitler. There are other battles to fight, and there are other ways in which the Jewish people can win. It may be that by continuing here, by continuing to remember that, we are simply involving ourselves in a sort of morbidity, just death, continuing death. Does this not tell on you? Does this not have its effect on you? Every of day course. you are. Of course. It, it, I don't want to sound, you know, like really a star or a, a, an actress, but it's very hard. You may believe me, it's very, very hard. We are talking about it every day. Then we come home and we read it again in books to know more. And then we dream it. And we are persecuted in our dreams every night. And then you have to stand up in the morning and to go and repeat the cycle again and again. It becomes very hard, really. When people are coming from abroad, everyone, Jew, coming here is, is uh, the, small, the small thread that binds us 
here, you know, because uh, b before that we felt rootless. Like Sholm Aleichem said, that the Jews are people without, without roots, hanging in the air, Sholm Aleichem said. Without roots, hanging in the air, where have I heard that before? The Deuteronomy curse, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. The punishment promised to the punishment hungry Jews if they fail to obey God. And thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. In a Jewish kindergarten, the latest and perhaps the last generation of Lithuanian Jews wakes from its sleep and prepares for a future somewhere else. <laughs> Kaunas was once the provisional capital of Lithuania. Something had to be, given that the actual capital was changing hands once every fortnight. It's said that unlike Vilnius, which is chock full of Russians and Poles, Kaunas is for Lithuanians. But I haven't come for the racial purity. I'm here to nose out the town's most famous curiosity, the Devil Museum. Once in private hands, but now a gift to the state, the collection comprises all manner of objects, made of all manner of materials, for all manner of use. That's if the encouragement of superstition can be counted a use, but always in a diabolic form. What is remarkable about the collection, to my eye, is how Jewish, right down to the Moses horns, the exhibits look. No, not look, ah. Communism having collapsed, Lithuanians are free to enjoy their pagan festivals once more. Tonight, the winter is being seen off and the spring welcomed. Going Jew, the carnival was sometimes called. It's just a manner of speaking, of course, but when a person puts a sweater on inside out in this country, someone may ask, you sleep with a Jew last night? No harm is meant. To the Lithuanian Gentile, the Jew is simply back to front, the reverse of what is natural. When a Lithuanian tries to imagine a malignant spirit, all he can see is a Jew. On the road at last to southwest Lithuania, to the shtetls my great-grandparents had the foresight to quit. 
a whisker before the turn of another devilish century. So how do you say Les D? I, I would say Les D8. Les D8? No, Les D8. Les D8. Les D8. Les D8. Les D8. Serie A. No way you could pronounce it. Try it. Serie A. Serie Oh, all right. First, you have to start working with your R. You have to say R. R. No, it's too R. Stir. Stir. Oh. All right, relax. Another joke. Do you know the joke about the, the knees? No. All right. No. This is like a, a family of America, new immigrants to America that speak, you know, not too, too good English. And uh, a woman is, how do you say, bears or give birth to a child. I mean, when produces the is this child. Is a Jewish joke? Yep. Then she gives birth to a miracle. All right. She gives uh, her birth to two miracles. The, and, and the man who, well, the husband suddenly loses his conscience, uh, faints, right? Yeah. So he faints. And uh, when he comes to conscience, so he's told that uh, his brother named uh, both children. And says, my brother, that idiot, he doesn't know English and he's stupid. And he says, well, how was the girl named? And uh, they say, Denise. There's Denise? Wow, that's not bad. It's a cool name and I like it. I mean, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say that my brother could, could name it this way. And how he named the, the boy? And he says, the nephew. <laughs> that was funny, right? That was extremely funny. All right. That was the funniest joke I've ever heard on the road to Las DH. Yeah. All right. Didn't your grandma used to say, like, if you marry a shiksa, I'll, I'll, I'll kick you out of my home, no? Yes, they all, the whole yeah, family said that. I, I was, didn't do any good, but they all said it. <laughs> it didn't work after all, right? No, but I mean, there's a top joke about it. Like, two grandmas are talking about it, and one of, one of them says that, you know, my, er, uh, how do you say, grandson, right? So my, my grandson, Haim, is a homosexual. And another says, like, Wow, is he meeting with Jewish boys? <laughs> I didn't hear much howling. No, you didn't hear a lot of howling, but it was a silent mirth. Oh. Sometimes the silent ones denote more appreciation. All there. right. Could you shiver your head when you have a silent howl? <laughs> so shiver I could, my, so shiver I, my, I could see it. Shiver my head is not English usage, but I'll try. Well, how do we see? Shake. Shake, all right. But I know I'd much prefer to shiver it. Now you tell a joke. No, I, I'm not I'm, good I'm at running joke. out of jokes. I'm not good at jokes. Life is a joke. That's enough of a joke. There's there anyway. I think you should let me have this a little bit to myself for a little bit. And, okay. Um, we'll be right back. See, in what half an hour, so, something like that. Okay. Oh. I am pacing myself emotionally. I'm not yet where I want to be. This is Lasdier, my great-grandfather's birthplace. But he left it when he was a young man to work for the glazier in Serie, where love blossomed. I'm saving myself, just as he did for Serie. There is nothing here. There is nothing here for anyone, not just Jews. Groaning with concrete cancer, Lasdier has the air of a town that was evacuated 50 years ago and to which no one has ever wanted to return. And that's more or less what happened. On the 3rd of November, 1941, the entire Jewish population was rounded up and shot. 1,600 Jews in a single day. It's assumed in the family that relatives of ours, with whom we had lost touch over the years, would have been among them. Holocaust again. I'd rather sit here and imagine a time before that, but maybe there was no time before that. There is certainly no time after it. It was the Nazis who superintended the shootings. But the civilian Lithuanians rolled up their sleeves and entered into the spirit of the occasion with an alacrity that impressed even the Germans. He did well, my great-grandfather, turning his back on this. I am obliged to him.
by hook or by crook, I will get past. I will get behind the Holocaust. This is the road my great-grandfather, Zaidi, would have taken to Serie. It's no distance. He could easily have walked it. I imagine him the only way I remember him, in a waistcoat with a watch attached to a silver fob chain. And it's thus attired that he walks the lanes again for me, a lit-back lad of 70, mad with love for the glazier's daughter. It's all prettier than I conceived it. I would never have guessed such a thing had I not come and seen the poetry of the place with my own eyes. But now it seems obvious. I may be no peasant, but I am the offspring of a rural idyll. Serie II has been de Judaized, but I would like a little more to take away from here than a half hour in a blasted square. Some token, some memento, some indubitably Jewish remnant, the sight of which I can feel I've shared with those of mine who lived here. She says uh, to ask that woman, she could know better. Yeah. Is there anything? Yeah, there is some things like the synagogues both are destroyed, and one uh, there is a cemetery. He's a Jewish guy. Yes, I know that. All right. Okay. Let's keep Thank going. You. Thank 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 you. We go straight ahead, then after after the church, we turn to the left and go, and then we'll see two two cemeteries: a Christian one and a Jewish one. Okay. There are some Christian cemeteries you would consider converting for. This is one. Undimmed by death, you lie beneath the benign protection of the trees, waiting for your loved ones to water you and flower you, which they seem to do every day. But where do the Jews lie? How is it since I found something? This is all there is, all that's left, a slab of abandoned stone in a forgotten field. I don't know on whose remains I'm standing. Does it really matter if it's family or not? In extremity, in insult, we are all related. So for an hour or two, against the odds, they are remembered. All the flowerless, friendless dead. <laughs> 